Welcome back to part two of the video where we will change from Crossfire to Express LMS. Happy to have you with me again. And uh, if you paid attention to the first part, then you know what's coming now. We're taking the S1100 Hyria and we'll uh, get this Crossfire out and exchange it to Express LMS. You gotta say yes to Express LRS. Today is the day we will begin to move on and we will shift out the good old crossfire which always did a good job to this little fella. We have to do this little receiver ready or prepare it to be able to connect to the Harrier. So I will open up and we will solder those pins on here. Just a size comparison, this is the usual LiPo checker and you see here, this is the tiny little thing. I don't know which, the zoom level is better. So yeah, we will take four pins and just solder them on here. And why is that? Why don't, don't I just solder them? Um, I've learned if I solder them, they will keep their place forever and that's fine. But in case you need to uh, flash those things and something goes wrong, you will have to disassemble the whole stuff again and that's a pain behind. Further, I wanted to be able to uh, have the system inter interchangeable with um, Crossfire, which I now won't use anymore. But anyways, um, the point is you can simply adjust on it or swap out the components and that's very important for me. So yeah, let's go solder this. I've just turned the Harrier around and this is the bottom side of the outer wing where the crossfire receiver is embedded and taped down. Um, as my usual configs uh, are, they are just plug and play so I can simply open up here and replace the stuff. I've opened up um, the compartment and the um, groove here and I can show you this connector. It's a simple connected with four pins and I've got five ground, five volt, TX and RX on it. So it matches perfectly to Crossfire. This is a Crossfire Nano, the TBS Crossfire Nano. And this is a happy model EP1 Express OLED 2.4 gigahertz receiver. Pin layout is the same. So for this sake, it's just plug and play and we're good to go. Let's see how this works out. Well, that TBS antenna is a bit bigger, so um, that groove and channel for the <laughs> TBS antenna really, um, well, <laughs> looks tremendously larger than this little 2.4 gigahertz antenna from Happy Model. And well, other than that, this is flush. It's really fitting in. And now I'm just taping back the groove, so, uh, there's nothing getting in there and well that's it that's it next we have to uh, correct on the controls within uh, INAF but that's a different story and we'll have a look at it later first of all we'll make this one um, accessible and flash it with um, Express LS uh, 2.0 which just released yesterday so yeah let's uh, get on I've just opened up the Express LS configurator and connected my USB wire to the flight computer. It's a Matic F722 we, uh, wing. It's the old one. It works fine though. It won't power the Express LRS receiver if I remember right. But maybe I'm mistaken because it's flashing and uh, that could be a sign we could flash it directly. See, it went over to boot mode. So yeah, let's try to flash that one. <laughs> maybe this works out, okay. We'll take the uh, happy model thing and we'll take, uh, it's an EP1. We take this one. It takes some devices. We will flash through beta by flight path through. And uh, that is not the thing. We got such settings. 
Let me just, I don't want to show you all this because that's my network. It's building. It's building. Working, working, and working. And perhaps it might directly flash. It's a brand new uh, EP1 receiver. This one got a green light, not an orange one. Okay, compiling, linking, missing, full duplex, whatever. No, it failed. Well, if you get this and you try to flash with beta flight path through, then it could be that it has to low power. So we will try that once more with the battery connected in the wing, which apparently isn't connected. So yeah, let's do this again. Okay, we're powered up. You can see the whole machinery is ready. The Express LRS thing is doing its thing and flashing heavily to indicate, yeah, we got a wireless connection open now. And um, we are connected to the web page, which pumps up at uh, address 10, 10, oh, no, 10, oh, oh, 1. And we scroll down and you can see there's this thing here. I go over to the window, pull over that thing and drop it on this. Drop it, <laughs> sorry. Drop it on that and hit update. Something is working, something is doing something. And the case, it didn't take it by default. We are beta flight path through us. It was an old firmware which is installed. This is not capable of uh, accepting beta flight path through in INAF yet. So yeah, that's the reason. So you have in any case the fallback to go on uh, the Wi-Fi mode, which always works for me at least. And you see here we are successful. It's rebooting and soon this thing will disappear. That's it, we are done. We should be able to connect to the wing by now. Let's see. Now, to make this work, we need this module. I'm a guy who is uh, pretty early, early with this thing. And I'm using the DIY transmitter. Um, it works fine. I've just flashed it yesterday to 2.0 and just connected to my radio master. And oh, sorry for getting out of focus. Uh, of focus, you can see it hooked on. Okay. And here's the thing. We are connected. Let's open up for that thing here. Welcome to Open TX. Disarm. Flight mode normal. Sounds good so far. Nothing happens, nothing happens. Let's see. I think uh, we need to bind that body once more for the first time. So yeah, I'm into the tool scripts and there's this uh, ExpressLRS Lua script. This is the old one. We take the new one as we are running 2.0. So yeah, let's go for it. There we go. Looks good so far. I want this to have the white switches and transmission power will be ha uh, no wait this one dynamic of uh, on and yeah that's it this one has no fan so I don't need that um, usually I fly with 100 milliwatts um, that's far than uh, far than enough for me but uh, to have an extra fallback on 250 milliwatts is nice Turns out me is too stupid, uh, I'm too slow. So yeah, the thing was flashing intensively as it was waiting for a reception as uh, the radio master wasn't uh, connected. So this went into wireless access point mode and then it won't use uh, respect that there is a transmitter waiting. So it waited to connect with wireless. So no binding on this way, but yet, Firing everything up again, you see there's solid light, that's good. We have anything here. And servos are moving. Responding to inputs I give them. Well, that's nice. Even lights work. That's good. Um, I don't know what else we can try. But we figure in the configurator. So yeah, basically it works. I didn't change so much by mall. You didn't see anything in the configurator yet because there wasn't anything to show. So by now we can say yes, works. So far it works. We are in the modes tab. 
Um, this is one we have to check because uh, this is where all the magic happens that you use. Um, I've got this six point switch and you can see I'm fine here with arm. I will not hit arm now because then my props will whoops, start to show and <laughs> we don't want that. Anyways, um, there is uh, channel 6 here for my modes and I see currently I must be in angle mode. That's fine with me because um, angle mode is the way to go. Horizon mode, that's fine if we press uh, position to 2. You see we have to adjust here, we'll do so accordingly. Come on, buddy. There. That's fine. Then we got Night mode cruise. cruise mode. This is here. See, I don't use the old way to do it. Enough cruise hold. And then we got waypoint mode, I guess. Waypoint, yeah, that's still fine. I adjusted that. We got the position hold. We have to adjust on that as well. Position hold, which also has enough alt hold somehow. Well, and then there's fail safe, which apparently works as it is maxed out. Yeah, that's so far fine. I'll get back. That's safe for now. Then there is auto tune mode. Let's see if we can. Okay, auto tune is just here. Okay, still works. Then the beeper. Oh, it works. Then OSD. Okay, we got default. We got one, page one, page two, and page three. That's fine. Works. Fail safe did work. It's channel six to the max. That's okay. And that's it. I guess we are ready. This is good. This is good. Let's save it here and we're fine. Hide unused modes. Right. There we go. Yeah. Um, well, that's it. Just another thing on the uh, switch mode wide. I uh, just recognized when we were connected and it always was on hybrid that you can't switch while you're going, while you are there. So you have to switch off the wing and or the receiver and switch this to wide and switch on again and then you're good. And then you, what you can do is have a look at uh, what is it, channel 10. This is wide mode. It's pretty fine you can see I can almost do anything with it so here we go pan and tilt no more trouble in this case mirror this is everything what's working out with wide mode and I can tell you I really love it I love it well done I guess that's it there's nothing more to it just plug and play and then go out and fly that thing nothing else will change um, don't expect any miracles to happen but don't get scared to do this because it's, you see it, just easy, just interchangeable. So um, I would thank you for being with me in this episode and watching straight to the end. And uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and join me next time when we are off for some new adventures. Be seeing you. Bye bye. Merry Christmas to you.